reports have surfaced that his matric certificate is fraudulent and he has not reported by showing evidence to the contrary. That being the case simply means that his appointment as a municipal manager was tainted by fraud and dishonesty. Section D, Section 37D, Subsection 1B2 of the Pension Funds Act 20, of 24 of 1956 provides that a registered fund may deduct any amount of money or compensation in respect of any damage caused to the employer by dishonesty, fraud, or misconduct in respect of a member. By present, presenting fraudulent qualifications, it follows that Mr. Mimba was untransferable and risked true fraud and the employer rely on Section 37D, subsection B, 1, 2 of the Pension Fund Act would be able to recover those monies. This was confirmed by the Peter Marisbeck High Court in the Umgeni Water versus Naidu judgment that was delivered by Judge Musop on 15 December 2022. Cardinal Pillar 7 of the EFF, open accountability, corrupt free government and society without fear of victimization by the state agencies. This House Honorable Deputy Speaker must debate considering that cause of action on recovering monies that were paid to the former municipal manager, Mr. Mimba, I so move. Thank you, Honorable Kotoi. The motion is noted, honored members, and uh, it will then be debated at the later stage in accordance with Rule 133, subsection 1. Thank you very much. Honorable Sondaba. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, motion without notice on Easter weekend, on Easter weekend road to safety. Honorable Speaker, I move without notice in terms of Rule 131 that the House uh, knows that many families would be traveling on our roads on, on holiday destinations and various religious pilgrimages this upcoming week, uh, Easter weekend. Whereas the, the increased traffic volume during this period account for numerous road carnages, which result to injuries and loss of life on our national roads and provincial roads, acknowledges that Road safety is a critical issue that requires concerted efforts from all stakeholders, including government, civil society organization, and the private sector. And it is the responsibility of government to ensure that roads are safe and that measures are put in place to reduce road accidents during the Easter period and beyond. Therefore, I move that uh, this House resolves a urging the Eastern Cape Provincial Government to take all necessary measures to ensure road safety during Easter period, including increasing visibility of law enforcement officers, conducting road safety campaigns, and repairing and maintaining roads to ensure that they are safe for use. B, urging all road users in the Eastern Cape to exercise caution and comply with road safety rules and regulation, including wearing of seat belts, the observance of speed limit, and avoidance of drinking and driving. C, encouraging civil society organization, the private sector, and other stakeholders to support government efforts to promote road safety during the Easter period and beyond. Urging the Eastern Cape Department of Transport to ensure that there is a strict enforcement of road traffic laws with particular focus on speeding, drunk driving, and other dangerous behaviors that contribute to road accidents. C, urging the Eastern Cape Department of Health to provide emergency medical services and support to those affected by road accidents during the Easter period. I so move. Thank you very much, Honorable Sondaba. I put the motion, Honorable Members. Yes. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Honorable Fisani. <coughs> Honorable Deputy Speaker, I move without notice in terms of Rule 130 that the House acknowledges that climate change is among the most significant development challenges facing the world today. The Eastern Cape, like many other regions around the world, is already experiencing the impacts of the climate change, climate change, including more frequent and intense extreme weather events like the flash flood that were reportedly 
experience increase our need for St. John's in the other parts of Oar Tambo. Acknowledges that a responsible and a responsive government, we have <clears throat> a duty to take action to mitigate the impacts of climate change and adapt to its effects. We need to ensure that our policies and actions are aligned with the goals of the Paris Agreement and other international commitments to reduce the impacts of climate change recognizes the impacts of climate change on the Eastern Cape, including increased frequency and intensity of extreme weather events and changes in the rainfall patterns, and acknowledges the urgency of the climate crisis and the need for the immediate and sustained action to address it. Therefore, resolves. Calls on the government to develop and implement a comprehensive climate change response strategy for the Eastern Cape, which includes mitigation, adaptation and re resilience building measures. Calls on the government to develop and uh, implement a, uh, yeah, and urges edge, uh, the government to work with the stakeholders, including civil society organizations, private sectors, and uh, communities to ensure that the climate change response strategy is inclusive, participatory, and responsive to the local needs and, re and, uh, and realities. Encourages the government to allocate sufficient resources towards implementing the climate change response strategy, including funding the research cap capacity building and infrastructural development. Calls on government to monitor and report regularly on progress towards the goals of climate change response strategy and to engage in international and national dialogues to ensure that our actions are aligned with the global efforts to address the climate change crisis. Thank you. I so move, Honorable Deputy. Thank you very much, Honorable Fisani. I now put the motion, Honorable Members. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable, Honorable Deputy Chief Speaker. Oh, okay, just before. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I, I rise on, on the question of the Honorable EFF Member that we do not have a quorum. If we take account, would you include it? We are 32, and we need 33 to be able to. to accept the motions that has been presented in the House. So I don't think that we can do that, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Okay. I will come back with that. The table staff will assist. Uh, Honorable Makashela. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Greetings to you and uh, the acting uh, Premier. I'm not sure who is the actual acting premier. Honorable Gatti claimed the <laughs> uh, on a lighter note. Uh, greetings to the honorable members in the house. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I move without notice in terms of Rule 130 that the House observe that government quest to address the triple challenges confronting South Africa is inextricably linked to economic growth and development. Acknowledge that South Africa's economic fortunes are tied to global economic performance and stability. Note that South Africa is endowed with the huge mineral and energy resources and potential. Also note that South Africa exports most of her raw material deposits to other countries without benefit. Acknowledge that below our feet there remains vast mineral and energy deposits. Encourage public representatives and the relevant stakeholders to assist government and private investors in finding a lasting solution to challenges that continue to confront the minerals and the energy sector. Therefore, resolve in promotion of alternative energy sources, urge government to ensure that mineral gas exploration and nuclear build program is prioritized consistent with the law and as approved and gazetted in the integrated resource plan and their procurement program are fast tracked as a medium to long term intervention plan to stab stabilize energy security uh, supply following South Africa's just energy transition plan. Further that energy just transition reaffirms that the process of defossilization of our energy sources must be pursued over a medium term 
over a medium to long term downscaling period related to upscaling in our renewable technology capabilities. I so move to the speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Chief Whip. Uh, Honorable members, let me just clarify one thing. We do have a quorum to start with this sitting, which is one third of 63 members. That is 21. But on all issues that uh, are pertaining to decisions that we must take, such now is going to be deferred because we don't make sufficient quorum for decision. So I would like to advise um, that uh, the decisions on motions that we have taken also stand deferred up until two members of this Honorable House arrive. Otherwise, there is nothing that uh, is causing us not to proceed, but just be mindful that we won't have powers in this sitting to decide on matters. Honorable Kaya. Yes, we are still not making sufficient quorum to decide. Uh, what I can request on our members is that uh, duty whips or whips of parties must ensure that their members are inside the chamber for decisions to take place. We can proceed uh, because we can just ratify in case we make that quorum. To Honorable Sondaba. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Motion the resuscitation of rail transport in the Eastern Cape. Notice of motion in terms of Rule 131 of the Standing Rules of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature. I hereby uh, give notice that uh, we recognize rail transport as the most co cost effective means of transport, both locally and over long distances. It is also because it brings a significant re reduction in transport cost, increased the safety and reliability of transport services, and consequently stimulate provincial trade and economic growth. In the midst of changing climate, rail transport uh, become, because of its energy efficiency, reduces greenhouse gas emissions and lowers cost per ton kilometers, and can safely contribute immensely in the conveyance of freight as well as passengers. That rail transport is inevitably critical to creating massive job opportunities and further supporting economic development. The ever-growing urbanization poses transportation challenges like congestion and road accident with high prevalence of fatalities that railways are well suited to handle. Regrettable acknowledges the state of existing railways infrastructure within the province. Therefore, the House uh, resolved that uh, to debate the matter in the light uh, of the Department of Transport in consultation with Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, conduct an audit of all abandoned railroads in the province and the extent costed infrastructure damage, provide a comprehensive plan in place towards the realization of a revival of uh, rail transport in the province. I so moved. Thank you very much, Honorable Sondaba. I will not put this motion once again uh, up until we are compliant. And uh, I will invite Honorable Filet. Honorable Deputy Speaker, House at Large, let me greet you on behalf of my organization, African National Congress. Honorable Speaker, I am going to move as per the Standing Rules 130 of the Legislature, that this House observes the commemoration of the TB Awareness Month under the theme, Yes, We Can End TB. I repeat, Yes, We Can End TB. A prompt call for collective action to end TB by 2030 in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. It also acknowledges that TB Awareness Month provides an opportunity to raise awareness about TB and the importance of early detection, treatment, and prevention. The month-long campaign also seeks to mobilize communities, stakeholders, and government 
to take action against the fight against TB. Further acknowledges that this is an opportunity for us to use our collective strength to build the good work and milestones we reached in 2022, where we worked hard to recover from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic while ensuring that the continued access of the diagnostic and treatment regimes as part of our national TB response. Notes with concern that the tuberculosis is a major public health challenge in our country. According to WHO, World Health Organization, South Africa has one of the highest TB burdens in the world. Every year, thousands of people are diagnosed with TB, and many of them lost their lives due to the disease. In South Africa, TB infections are complicated by high rates of HIV and TB infections. South Africa accounts for almost 3% of the positive TB cases worldwide. More frightening, the 4 out of 27 districts with a high infection rate in the country are located in Eastern Cape. These are Oliver Tambo, Buffalo City, Zara Batman, and Nelson Mandela Bay. We appreciate that in the national level, the government and the social partners have been working tirelessly to turn the tide against the TB pandemic. With the many noticeable achievements such as scientific advances in TB treatment, policy reforms and various campaigns which have been fighting the stigma attached to TB yielded better understanding of the infection. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Eastern Cape Department of Health has not left in developing strategies that aid the fight against TB. Its implementation of the so-called 1990-90, the triple 90 strategy, has already made considerable progress in 2022. 96% of the patients in diagnosed, 93% have initiated and retained treatment. 77% of these who receiving treatment being successfully treated and 14.1% 14 14 being lost, follow which a slight decrease of 142 in 2021. It is a, indeed a good story. Therefore, to resolve, to applaud the Eastern Cape Department of Health to invest the technologies to improve the response strategy to TB. Secondly, the Eastern Cape Department of Health to strengthen the TB response regarding the engagement with those infected and affected by TB, communities and civil societies to accelerate progress towards reducing the TB burden across the province. I so move. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Anel Kumar. I won't put this motion also, but let me clarify the motion, notice of motion on the resuscitation of the rail uh, by Honorable Sondaba, because that was not for agreement, therefore we noted it. And I think it will be debated uh, at a later stage according to Rule 133, Subsection 1. Honorable members, uh, only when we make sufficient quorum, we shall retable these motions for agreement. Let's move to member statements. The acting premier for the day is Honorable Ponsiwe, uh, who has been formally designated by the premier to act on his behalf. Thank you very much, ma'am. Honorable Sponda, Honorable Magashela, Honorable Vena, those are the members indicated to table their member statements. Three minutes per each. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Yesterday, the Premier Oscar Mabuyan told the House uh, that the, medis, the medical cannabis industry in South Africa is set to grow from 87.7 million in 2021 to 406.3 million by 2026. He also said hemp retail sales in African markets were expected to top 2.4 billion last year. The recreational cannabis market in South Africa is expected to reach $1.2 billion this year. According to the Premier, even though he was quick to point out that it is still illegal to buy and sell cannabis and various cannabis products, these are big numbers. Uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, but the concern is that in the pursuit of big numbers, we are losing sight of the bigger picture. Honorable Deputy Speaker, there was a time when driving and the winding roads of Pondale between the scattered homesteads and rolling hills, you would see field upon field of cannabis. These plantation, plantations have been part of the traditional heritage of the area for generations. 
long before decriminalization of the plant. But these fields are dwindling. As traditional growers find their markets shrinking and their place in value chain replaced by commercial farmers and private growers. These traditional farmers cannot compete. The cost of getting a license to grow cannabis is too expensive and individual recreational users are opting to grow their own plants rather than risk persecution of, pers of purchasing. Sadly, as this heritage is lost, so too are the lendrins varieties of the cannabis. These are strains of cannabis that have been nurtured and cultivated over generations, both for their medicinal and recreational use. With the shift to medical cannabis and the emphasis on CBD, commercial farmers are shifting to hemp varieties with lower THC values. Personal growers, and in comparison, experiment with hybrids to get the best recreational effects. Both scenarios mean that these land and strains are at risk, and we could be losing plant varieties that have potential benefits not yet discovered. Preliminary studies of the Ponderland variety of the plant by the CSIR have shown promising results in the treatment of breast cancer. It is therefore vital, Madam uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, that in pursuit of opening up the market, we do not lose sight of those for whom it has been a way of life for generations, that we do not leave those who have been custodians of these land and varieties behind. We must not lose sight of cannabis heritage in pursuit of, of fast resources. Uh, I would love to ask the Honorable Premier, how is the province going to ensure that we preserve the Pondoland variety as it carries the culture and heritage of the area? Thank you very much. Honorable Zbonda, Honorable Makashan. Thanks, uh, Deputy Speaker. The impact of uh, National School Nutrition Program. The National School Nutrition Program in the Eastern Cape is benefiting 1,628,811 learners in quintile 1, 2, and 3. Uh, schools as well as targeted special schools. The program has shown to improve punctuality, regular school attendance, concentration, and the general well-being of the participating <coughs> learners. It plays an important role in reducing hunger and nutrient deficiencies, and it increases cognitive thinking, which improves academic performance. The National School Nutrition Program is acknowledged as having a positive impact on the nutritional status of children. For many children, the meal they receive at school is the only full nutritious meal as many households are living below uh, two per day. The benefits of the National School Nutrition Program go beyond feeding learners at school and can also boost the local economy by offering opportunities for many women in our communities as meal handlers. To this extent, the ANC applauds the government for ensuring near universal access to education for pupils from grade one and urges the Department of Education to ensure that these learners are not lost in the system. ANC is of a firm view that supports provided to schools, support provided to schools in the form of learner support material, nutrition, scholar transport, etc., should enable learners to remain and progress within the system till grade 12. The trends do show that when schools are appro appropriately supported and functional, such immense, immensely benefit learners from rural and township schools. This was evidenced by metric results in 2022 as the semi-rural districts of Alfred Zowest got the highest metric pass rate, as it recorded an 82.7% pass rate, surpassing districts in more affluent parts of the province. In addition, evidence also confirms that learners from quintile 1 to 3 who make it to university tend to perform on par or even better with their counterparts from other quintiles and from private schools. The silver lining is that if learners are appropriately supported, then they tend to perform better, and the ANC government must continue to realize these policy imperatives. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chief Whip. I don't see Honorable Werner here. I will now request uh, 
uh, you uh, acting premier to respond to the member statements and uh, or assign uh, the responsible uh, MECs uh, to respond to the statements. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, the Honourable Deputy Speaker. Good morning to you. Good morning to the Chief Whip and the Honourable Executive Committee members and the members of this legislature. Uh, good morning. Uh, on the cannabis, uh, the Premier has assigned the MEC for Dr. Da or for the Department of Rural Development and Agrarian Reform uh, to champion this uh, program of cannabis. And this also includes engagement with the National Department the industries and stakeholders that are involved. So, and including the checking the laws and uh, the legislations that are there that previously disadvantaged this effect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, on on our Makashela statement, school nutrition. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker. I will assign that to Honorable Gatte, the MEC for Department of Education. Thank you very much. Over to you, Honorable MEC. Uh, thanks, uh, Deputy Speaker. Your established protocol is observed. Allow me to respond to the member statement by the Chief Whip. Uh, Deputy Speaker, the purpose of the national schools a nutrition program is to enhance the learning capacity and to promote the access to education by providing nutritious meals to learners, in particular in Quindale 1 to 3 public ordinary schools in the country, and also targeted uh, in the context of the province, uh, the special schools, because they fall within the category uh, of the destitute families and households that needed an intervention from the state. The impact of the program is linked to improve the quality life through access to lifelong learning. Uh, the National Schools uh, Nutrition Program is funded through a conditional grant and the output activities are aligned to the division of the revenue bill which are gazetted in the annual conditions grant framework. There are three pillars um, uh, Deputy Speaker, that must be noted in the House uh, in the concepts of the execution of this function. One is the provision of the nutrition meal to learners, uh, uh, meaning the, the main meal and also the, the breakfast that we have just introduced now as a province. The, nu the nutrition education and advocacy, uh, which also encourages hygienic uh, practices uh, precisely because we are a generation of viruses. So we must always be cognizant of that fact. Also, the prom promotion of the sustainable food gardens. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I will just give you a detail uh, in terms of the stats uh, so as to close up the discussion. Uh, in 2022, Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, we have budgeted uh, one, 1.5 billion, um, in fact, 1 billion, 551 million, 943,000, uh, so that we can accommodate um, this assignment. We are fitting uh, for 197 days um, for each and every academic year. We are fitting uh, 1 million, 639, uh, thousand and one oh eight learners in the province. Uh, we are focusing on primary as I've said and also special schools. Um, we have also within that framework and also uh, the function itself uh, reintroduce uh, the issue of the food handlers stipend of one point seven ten rents uh, per person so as to also <coughs> move beyond just the schooling environment. But how does the function itself respond to the uh, stubborn uh, unemployment uh, poverty that is confronting um, the nation in general, Honorable Speaker? There are key achievements that I can lift as I learned, uh, Deputy Speaker, without consuming much of your time. 
2019, we were at 9,707 beneficiaries. In 2020, we were at 9,691. In 2021, we were at, uh, two, at 2,000. I'm sorry. Uh, in, in 2021, we were at 224,998. Uh, in 2022, we were at three, 352,883 uh, in, in terms of the newly, uh, newly established uh, breakfast in particular. And uh, in 2023, we are at... Um, one million twenty one one million and twenty seven thousand uh, learners for the 2023 2024 so those are the indicators by which uh, we can demonstrate uh, deputy speaker in terms of the relief programs uh, that are assigned in the function thanks uh, honorable uh, deputy speaker thank you very much honorable msc uh, honorable acting premier thank you very much i think you have sufficiently covered uh, the member statements. Honourable members, this is but one mechanism to ensure that uh, our executive is accountable because these member statements represent the constituencies where you are coming from and each and every statement that is uttered here uh, is getting sufficient attention and response. Please continue to do that because we have introduced uh, this kind of a rule to ensure that members go back to their own constituencies with something and the members of the public definitely sure are going to be much more happier to receive these figures and uh, how the meal servers are contracted and what are the numbers for those young people that are getting meals and the reintroduction or introduction of breakfast in addition to the lunch they used to have. Thank you very much, members. Uh, now I will ask the secretary to read the first order of the day. And welcome to the PLOs that I'm seeing on top. Uh, the attendance is improving. Uh, you, you are welcomed, Honorable. Oh. <laughs> Proceed, Secretary. Honorable, Proceed. Consideration of the report of Portfolio Committee on Transport and Oversight visits to traffic stations on effect finding mission on their operations to inspect roads under construction and maintenance in Alfredo and Oatambo districts. Thank you very much. I will now invite the Honorable Chairperson of the Portfolio to table the report for 20 minutes, Honorable Malamlela. Thank you, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Uh, good morning to you, the Acting Premier, in Adarako Show Bung Acting Premier, the executive members, uh, the honored members, and uh, also the GG and HODs, and our guest in the gallery, Molweni Nonke. Um, Honorable Deputy Speaker, on the 20th to 23rd uh, September 2022, our committee did an oversight uh, Emma Bay, uh, with District A. Pansy, Commissioner. Um, exchange a lot less. <laughs> oh, Mr. Chavut. Um, these are the areas that we visited. We started to with uh, Alfred Zot District Office and then Maluti Traffic Station, Mount Fred Traffic Station, Emma Traffic Station, and Winnematti Zela Mandela Traffic station. In the and the letter park with recommendations and I report deputy speaker. On the recommendations 
in relation to the district itself, we are recommending that the department must engage with the Department of Public Works with a view to considering building a permanent structure in order to create a conducive work environment for employees. Bonagali structures is Langapa. We hope the precinct DG will address uh, this problem. The department must, as a matter of agency, ensure that network connection in the district is attended to in order to ensure the smooth running of the office. Um, the department must fill all critical vacant funded posts in the district in order to improve its services and ensure efficiency. The department must ensure the visibility of road rangers on all roads that have a light rate, a high rate of stray animals. The department must further ensure the close monitoring of the work of the road rangers and consider providing them with branded reflections in order to ensure they are easily identifiable. The department must, in compliance with the Employment Equity Act 1998, Act number 55 of 1998, ensure the representation of women in the districts, in the district of um, the department must come up with a plan on how it will ensure that Ndabankulu communities are catered for in terms of other means of transport. We were very much concerned in the Obokwana Abantu basenda bangulu bachomeke ke kono tics ukuphe siyabazi kono tics ubababambiki ya so sathi ke noko ayisiphathi kakuhlele meko ngasikhawulo ezi address e public transport urhulumente wethu ibethelela kanoko ya ya em on 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 maluti traffic station um, the committee must be finished with a plan as to how the station will be assisted in the interim while the department is still finalizing its organogram. On a shortage of traffic officers, Paya, Kanopo, Kamba is a Pulam Teto, Ziawa Tata Matuba Kazta. The department must consider decentralizing the procurement of traffic officers' uniforms after the expiry of the current contract in order to address the challenges relating to the provision of these uniforms. By never it change color uniform. On the extra large in a manya matasha, and Manumbo no ke indo di pizzas <laughs> or any mama kulo uniform. Em city ke ma it centralized kuba sapa kuba is centralized. We then moved it to Malu Mount Fred traffic station. A Mount Fred traffic station i recommendations e to city. The department must consider opening a satellite traffic station in Dabangur in the interim, whilst considering opening a fully fledged station again in Dabangur. The traffic has quasi of Figalela Pa and Okaules. Satige, no, I spatic up the land of was a Banbas and Dabangur, Bangati was born in Ati, Ukulman, the Wimpumakulu, Narabakata, the Lang. Yeah, Satige my colleagues, Ilungi, so Kube, Kube, one of my satellite station, Pangel, Treshak, Saza, Nuba, Maglungi, Selemek. 
the department must come up with a clear strategy on how they are going to conduct an awareness program aimed at educating the residents on the importance of registering their vehicles within the province. Utwage uni in Zilela Kala, a Bahafanga, Papa Zuluna Dal, a Icho e Betegen Wogu, a revenue, a lapa, a Eastern Cape, Unga Kumbi Blangi, Yasema Kasbin, the Bonagu Fuchale. We then went to Paga, the traffic station, Paya. Said the department must engage with all relevant stakeholders with a view to finding an amicable solution to the land claim with the Emakisibeni community. Unobangi Swanopa, Kalam Shaba, Sibuyo, as Lanansegala traffic station. Abandu in the Bonabati, Wagnes, Fumeluan, Estile, Ukulmende, Anga just honorish. On the Mbizana traffic station, we are saying the department must, the department working with the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure and all relevant stakeholders must resolve the land issue with the Mshanga community. Again, Napa, Ikoni Mwaba Mwaba, Ebu Tibana, Nendwe No Mshaba, Napa, Yagune Tembi Seza Zenziyo, Pate La Mshaba Kwa Kiwe Guo Pangwabo, Nkati No Spa, Tile Pagat. So said Napa, who Kulmende Makakale Zailungis Lemeko. We then went to Yas Zok Tibana Kasubuya Gepa, Sazo Tibana Apem Tata. No MEC, some tell a MEC, the Safika. Sati magazo tibana na tapem chat. E figure la gui nga kebez tabazi kona pae o arkambo ne traffic officers. Awa figure nyano em isi she. Kanga nguba deputy speaker I can say all those matters now that were challenges at o arkambo have been resolved. Yeah, if a little land of particular company with traffic officers, but all those matters uh, have now been addressed. And this Metule Lumas, who MEC, a guine, no HOD, power transport. Uh, on the Airport. By airport, you see the Pacific Apa, Safumanisa, and the Obani Mek was in Tangakaku. Into Kaishi and a model by Vic Yong came Ke. I call Peking Nanziga a charge. I sat in my lung. We are recommending that the department must first track the construction of the airport and report on the availability of the 19,000. 19, 0.450 million that was allocated in 2021-22 budget. The department must submit a comprehensive report on the zoning of the area for construction and the completion of the fire station in order to attract bigger airlines for revenue generation. Uh, the installation of the paid public parking at Mtata Airport must be fast tracked and to enhance the safety of vehicles was generating revenue for the airport. Um, we then came back from the airport and went to Mtata Mass Way Bridge. Nancy Apanga say Ultra City Kla Ungenem Tata Abawazium Tat. Honorable Dabi is very much passionate about <laughs> that way bridge. Sifuman Sepa in the Goban, the department must ensure that the committee is accompanied by the accounting officer who is able to provide the committee with satisfactory 
and or reasonable responses. Yeah, I do have a senior management. This is the best I'm going to do. I'm going to say, 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 before COVID-19. Yeah. So, Satige, the department must, as a matter of agency, ensure that the way bridge is calibrated and that the scale is serviced and operational in order to safeguard provincial roads from unroadworthy and overloaded heavy duty trucks. Asebuileke, Honorable Rundabini, while Chilbuza is monitoring XG, Sebuile was a stellar by Yasa Benzo. The same thing. We are a young work. Sifunage Amalunga Fanana Kulelechis. Kutele. Nothing Genjo was okay. Genjo was a worker. Um, on, 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 we then met with Sandra who briefed us on the work they are doing there. And our recommendation is that the department must strengthen its contract management and take relevant action against non-performing contractors. There is a lot of contractors who just abandon uh, their work there. The department must finish the committee with time frames within which the road network master plan will be finalized and submitted to the committee to avoid working in a piecemeal manner. I remember Nomumkwat was working on this matter. I got finalized on Nomumkwat. We still need to buy my day here finalized on Uba while we share is On the general recommendations, we are saying the department must ensure that the challenge of the dysfunctional natives at traffic stations is resolved to enable stations to operate effectively and efficiently. The department must provide the committee with a process map with clear time frames indicating when the process of the review of the organogram up to its approval will be finalized. The department must urgently attend to the working relations between head office and the district in order to ensure the smooth running of the department. Tataban to fight head office, it is about head office. Ufumansegen in the entire district, everybody is kind of active. Yeah. Um, the department must provide traffic officers with bulletproof vests to minimize the risk of loss of life. And uh, the department must consider assisting the traffic stations with gas scam vehicles for effective law enforcement operations. In conclusion, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, uh, I myself as a chairperson of the committee would like to thank the committee members, uh, Department of Transport, and the committee support staff uh, for the cooperation and assistance during the consideration of this report. We are giving the time frame to respond to all the recommendations by the department within 30 days after the adoption of this uh, report. I saw submit the report for adoption Honourable uh, Deputy Speaker, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Honourable members, are there questions directed to the committee? Yes. Honourable Tuabu? Only one.
Thank you, thank you, Deputy, Deputy Speaker. Uh, thank, thanks to the chairperson of the committee. I just want to, to find out from the committee chair, I didn't find a sense that when they were visiting the, the, the provincial stations, there was some interaction with also the, the, those, that are, those the traffic officers that are working on the ground for municipalities. I'm asking the question because the, 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 there are also the offices that collect money in terms of, of uh, the, the licenses and testing, which are using machinery that some of them is bought by the province. Just, I just wanted to find if the committee did have some interactions that were also inclusive of those uh, 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 law enforcers on the ground because they are also using the laws of the provincial government. Thanks. Thank you. Chairperson? You can use uh, Honorable Panga's mic. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Honorable Deputy Speaker. No, 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 the Honorable Member is correct. Indeed, we did not interact uh, with the traffic officers in the municipalities. Yeah, uh, as much as we are aware that they have some kind of a connection in terms of collecting the revenue, but uh, it never crossed our mind. I think it's something that we'll have to consider going forward. Thank you very much, Honorable. Uh, Thank, Thank you very speak. much. Any questions directed to the Honorable MEC? None. I will now invite Democratic Alliance Honorable Botha to start the debate. Honorable Deputy Speaker, all protocols observed. Transportation developments have taken place since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and have been linked to growing economic opportunities for humanity. Modern day transport is a function that is legislated and executed at various levels of government. The Constitution and various others related legislation identify the legislative responsibilities of government regarding airports, roads, traffic management, public transportation, and etc. To achieve the above, the Department of Roads and Transport is responsible for maximizing the contribution of roads and transport to the economic and social development goals of society by facilitating and providing fully integrated transport operations and infrastructure. Roads are indeed a pathway to a better life as they are an integral to the economic flow of goods and services via various modes of transport. Honorable Deputy Speaker, to keep our economy flowing, we require law-abiding road and mobility users. In this regard, and very interestingly, the World Health Organization links road traffic accidents and injuries to seven major behavioral risk factors. One, speeding. Two, driving under the influence, failure to use seat belts, motorcycle helmets not being utilized, and child restraints, drunk driving, and using mobile phones while driving. Are we not all sometimes guilty of that? Honorable Deputy Speaker, it's a fact that South Africa's mobility laws are aligned with the international best practice to deal with all the above risks, factors, as I mentioned. Yet, road safety outcomes are far from acceptable in our province. Traffic centers, way bridges, and traffic officers are indeed under-resourced, as pointed out in this report. Traffic officers is our, 
in our province render a wide range of law enforcement services, not just stopping vehicles, writing uh, tickets out. They also ensure that all the pedestrians that use our roads are doing it in an orderly manner to ensure that there is a safe and free flow of traffic to prevent road crashes and deaths on our roads. They conduct roadside operations where they regularly confiscate illegal goods, drugs, illicit cigarettes, which violates the law and leads to appearances in court proceedings, and et cetera, et cetera. These functions are done under life-threatening conditions as they cannot predict human beings' behavior. And it is for this reason that they require urgently bulletproof vests. On it, Honorable Deputy Speaker, the report table today at a high-level overview once more points out serious management and operational constraints, with most findings in this report being repetitive year after year without any real progress or consequence management taking place. I want to say, very sadly and disappointingly, that after 30 years of democratic government, the ANC must stop running away from the fact that they are still struggling to transform from a liberation movement to a party of good ethical government. This report once more serves as an indictment on the ANC governing party, its inept cater deployed comrades and outdated Soviet-style policies. This report indicates that the department has reached its sell-by date and that you are not a government of the future. A modern government is a government and they are a government that are business-centered. They are agile and digitally enabled. They inspire people to change, seek innovation solutions, and puts the operational well-being of traffic law enforcement officials first. Traffic law enforcement officials are the face of government. The ANC's preoccupation with race classification, bean counting, and cater deployed comrades has brought this department to a total standstill, and it is still struggling to overcome decades of repetitive findings. Forward-looking governments, such as DA governments, are focused on innovative initiatives and they are, have also got agile regulations, designed to give them a much deeper role as economic stewards. They work in close partnership with the private industry to grow their economies, out of debt, debt and out of problems that people are experiencing on the roads as potholes. They work to ensure a future prosperity for South Africa. The DA is indeed a forward-looking political party with a proven track record of innovation and good governance. Let's look at the Western Cape province where the DA governs. They have a 24-7 fully resourced, successful traffic law enforcement system that works. The overall road traffic fatalities in the Western Cape in the year 2022-23 was 131 compared to 207 in the year 2021-22 festive season. This represents a massive 37.72% decrease in road fatalities between the two years. The Eastern Cape DA is of the opinion that the Department of Transport must overcome its challenges mentioned in this report. And it will only do that through effective management with appropriate resources that will enable traffic law enforcement officers to do their job professionally and not piecemeal wise. A DA government will increase the provincial traffic force in order to strengthen the presence of officers on the roads to fight illegal transportation of prohibited goods and potentially improve driver behavior to reduce road fatalities. We will ensure a safe, well-developed, and maintained provincial road network that meets provincial transport and socioeconomic needs of the Eastern Cape. We will revitalize rail transportation for both freight and passenger services. And in order to mitigate challenges in an era characterized by unprecedented uncertainties like weather, inclement weather in the Eastern Cape, the DA will promote new ways of thinking and fresh approaches to complex problems. We will improve road safety communication 
We will use social media, radio, billboards, with a variety of messages on billboards that are placed strategic locations that will offer up-to-date information on road closures, traffic volumes, adverse weather conditions, and road safety awareness messages. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the DA calls on the ANC, and thank you, Honorable Sondaba, for exactly this, to raise the awareness about the dangers of driving and walking under the influence, using cell phones while driving and walking, fatigue driving, overloading, seat belts not being utilized, jaywalking, distracted driving, and distracted walking. Also to mention stray animals. The report points to a lack of integrated approach in this department. There's definitely a lack of an integrated approach here. The integration that we are talking about is that the training of officers by the training and development units, road users being educated on road safety matters by the road safety management, and then the inland teams that can talk about transport safety engaging our freight industry. There must be also a teams going out and working together in terms of ensuring quality management and evaluation of services rendered. We must ensure that public transport conforms to the letter of the operational licenses and the law. Law enforcement officers must have a suitable functioning vehicle and suitable functioning equipment now and not in the next 10 years to come. The DA confirms that the findings in this report is indeed correct. We also support the recommendations in this report and we support the entirety of this report. And we are looking forward to a speedy and excellent for the next report that will be tabled in this House. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Reporter. I will now call United Democratic Movement, Honourable Zinti, four minutes. Uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, to tell you the truth, the truth, it is infuriating to say the least that the Portfolio Committee, which is set and according to its mandate, hold the executive and the entire department accountable, has to now crawl and beg for reports and accountability. We are not taken seriously here as the representative of constituencies. It can't be the it can't be that the road network master plan and still we are asking for time frames as to when this will be handed over to the, com to the committee. Why, why are we here? Why are not heads rolling and hold anyone, including the MEC, for this lack of service delivery? Honorable Speaker, it can't be business as usual when roads are not being finished year after year. Our people are faced with, stops, with stop and go in the same roads and more flabbergasting areas because there is no movement or progress. Money is thrown into these companies and they abandon the work halfway and again another company is appointed to come steal from our people, leaves the job again, not done. It is a vicious cycle that's unending and this government seems not to care because these are their low-hanging fruits for corruption and kickbacks. Where is the alleged Mbizana service provider who was allegedly paid 19 mil million rands to a Mbizana that did not do any work for the department? What happened to that service provider? Has the money been recovered? Who has been arrested for scamming and embezzling taxpayers' money? You must be charged for gross negligence and wasteful expenditure. We do not have leaders who are competent to do the job, and the problem is not, all, is not at the lower levels of management. The actual problem is at the helm. We have people who, are, who cannot in any way perform their, their duties, instead are check collectors. The UDM is tired of this behavior. Our people are dying because the department failed to provide traffic officers with, bullet, with bulletproof vests to minimize the risk of loss of life. How can we speak of, of bulletproof, bulletproof when uniforms are a problem? 
which traffic officer will be taken seriously when exercising their duties with chore uniform? No, colleagues, we must be serious here. People who execute and implement the same laws that are crafted by you as legislators and we fail to address our legislation in dignifying and respectful manner and think that those who break the law will respect it. No ways it, ca it cannot be. The UTM will never understand the shortage of staff when positions are funded. What makes it hard to advertise the position and fill up those positions? We are lamenting here day in and day out about high un unemployment rate with all excuses we can think and then it appears that in some areas of governance, unemployment is man-made by refusing to fill up positions and recruiting more traffic personnel in areas with shortage. In fact, the entire Eastern Cape is at a deficit of law enforcement and hence this beautiful province has become a crime scene. Women are placed yet again in this province at the back and not front row players. Gender equity is not something that that is taken serious here. Department of Labor does not hold its sister department accountable. Every year, women emancipation is at, at the core. You quote speeches of great women who fought, who fought for the liberation of this country. However, till this day, nothing significant we see on the ground. Women make up the largest population, but at the, at the most less equipped and developed. Thank now, let's talk about a good story to tell, Mr. Premier. 29 years after the dawn of democracy, Thank we are still much, crying and fighting for our well-deserved place up. as women. The UDM accepts the report Thank you very with much. its recommendations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Zinti. I will now call upon the African National Congress, Honorable Dimaza. No, thank you, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Acting Premier, Honorable Members, Chief Whip, Deputy Chief Whip, and leaders of all different parties that are here, guests in the gallery, officials from the departments. Firstly, let me thank the opportunity given to me by the Whipary of the African National Congress to come and debate here today. As ANC Deputy Speaker, we support the report as presented and tabled here by the Chairperson of the Committee, Honorable Malamne. Honorable Members, the report tabled is clear on challenges, challenges confronting our traffic officers and the recommendations as made by the committee that have been tabled in this House. Therefore, there will be no need, that is, for me to do repetition and repeat what has been said by the Portfolio Committee, just like all other members have done here. But before I in, just I get into what I want to deal with, because today I want just to talk about the question of provincialization that is in our departments. But before I deal with that, there are certain things that I want to correct quickly. The first part that I want to correct it's a pity that the majority of the members of the DA are not here today because I wanted to refer to them directly. One thing that I want to say, the first part is that, please, don't let us all the time to think that you are still deeply, deeply thinking about the situation of what Fairfoot said in 1954. Because most of the time you come here and present the Western Cape as if it is a tabla rasa. You are here to table the, West, the Western Cape as if everything is clean in the Western Cape, which is not true, which is not true. The first part that I want, Honorable Porter, for you to talk about, as far as the traffic department is concerned in the Western Cape, now, whilst we are speaking, there are more than 1,000 illegal, irregular licenses that have been issued out in Stellenbosch only. There are 500 irregular licenses that have been issued out in Swellendam. Also, there are eight police officers 
and 15 traffic officers who have been dismissed because of involving this particular type of corruption. And you come here as, as, and depict as if everything is clear in the Western Cape, whilst it is not the case. Second, you know what is happening presently at Goodwood and Philippi police stations, as far as traffics are concerned in the Western Cape, and you can't. What happened in the Western Cape with the Blue Dot Taxi Project? The Blue Dot Taxi Project, which was only launched in 2020, July. By 2021, October, that particular project collapsed. 215 million got lost. And it is then that you appealed to the National Department of Transport that the National Department of Transport must assist. And then, Honorable Mbalula refused and said, where is the 215 million rents? Now you come here and depict Western Cape as if it is the D province that you have to look into. The Corruption Watch. Check the corrupt. No, keep quiet. Corruption Watch. Zip that mouth. Corruption Watch Honorable is Speaker. indicating Honorable out of four. Okay, just a second to save your time, honored member. On what order are you raising your hand, honored member? It's very interesting. Would the member take a question from me, please? Honorable Timaza, are you prepared to take a question from the honorable member? You can write it. I will, I will take it. When you write it, I will respond to your question. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. He's not prepared to take your question. The other now. point, Chair, honorable, honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, that you wanted to raise here. Time and again, when Honorable Stevenson comes here, he's talk about the Eastern Cape. Corruption Watch, the sixth report of the Corruption Watch, the fifth report of the Corruption Watch has indicated that Western Cape is on the top five corrupt provinces. Eastern Cape is not there. It's Houghton, it's Western Cape, it's Northwest, it's Northern Cape, it's KZN. Eastern Cape is not there. Now you come here and, 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 and pretend as if everything is, is, is clear in the, in the Western Cape, what is not the case. So you need at least to change this attitude, this, this grasshopper mentality, you see? Because you've got what you call the grasshopper mentality, that means as if into a punch of a bond of a shop, it is the young and the Kubeka Kubeka Nim shop. After now, I see this figure in the blonde, okay? And the other thing, and back to Leila Bandi, but what happened with your mayor in Tswane, Randall Williams? 1.2 billion rands in irregular expenditure. That's some of your partners that decided to say he must resign. Deputy Speaker, I just wanted to correct some of those, but next time, Kabe Pelelapa, I'm going to dwell much. Can't give him any chance. Yabafuna Kabe Pelele, because always the Kai Pitish. Deputy Speaker, I think, as I've indicated, Mind today, I want to focus on the question of provincialization. You know, according to OMA, traffic enforcement is the main concern of traffic management due to lack and the breakdown in discipline on South African roads because of high volumes of vehicles and pedestrians as well as more elderly drivers. A new generation of young drivers and more problems, frustration, and antisocial behavior of South African road users. I expected that is to continue, and as long as we still have some serious problems of the shortage of these particular traffic officers. Thus, we support some of the issues raised by the report that we need more traffic officers on our road. The media report and the newspaper articles give evidence of total disregard of law enforcement and lack of respect for law enforcement officials. These officials have many duties. In the midst of exercising those duties, these officials experience physical and verbal abuse from members of the public. Sometimes they experience this even from amongst that is senior officials in their offices. Traffic officials, honorable members and honorable deputy speaker, also encounter, also encounter and clean up horrific accident scenes and stabilize life-threatening situations 
prevent road range, accident speeding, overloading public transport problems, set up and man road blocks, and work overtime. Thus, we appeal as the African National Congress, let us treat them as professionals. Let us treat them in a professional manner. It is therefore of paramount importance that these law enforcement officials are encouraged to engage in personal and skill development activities. These personal and skill development activities would address and enhance law enforcement officials' inter- and intrapersonal skills, stress management and ability to cope with the culture of organizational and social change. That's why, as the African National Congress, we support the MEC, Honorable Ngata, when in his policy speech tabled here on Tuesday, this week, last, this week, yes, tabled here on Tuesday, when Honorable Ngata said, as the department, they are establishing the Provincial Traffic College, which in that particular traffic college, that is where they wanted to train some of these particular traffic officers. We are saying as the African National Congress, forge ahead and don't lose the sight of the benefit of establishing that type of a center. This is in line with the Skills Development Act of 1998. As ANC, we wanted to make an appeal to senior officials in the departments, especially the Department of Transport, who want to instill, that is to some, who want to instill a grasshopper mentality within the department to stop that type of an attitude. You see, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Upata, Upata, Akufunekangu Upata, Akufunekangu Upata, Akufunekangu Upata, Akufunekangu Upata, Upata, Akufunekangu people must fear you. People must respect you. It's not a question of being feared. People must respect you, and people will do the work for you. But if you instill fear to the people, then people will never respect you. As a leader, people must respect. You earn respect. You don't gain respect. You earn respect. The serious problem in transport, those particular senior managers, they, are, they want you to gain respect by victimization and all those particular things. Let us change that particular type of mentality and allow people that is, you see, this caused, you see, William Osler, although he was writing for the doctors and professors when he was warning them, William Osler once said to them, listen to your patient. He or she is telling you the diagnosis. Listen to the patient. Even if you are a doctor, even if you are what, listen to the patient because the patient is telling you the diagnosis. Listen to the official. Even in most fair that you say, even there are times when the eagle must go down to the end. So that as an eagle, you reach the point that you want to send. That's the appeal we want to make. Some of the failures in our department, it is only because of this mentality of trying to force people to do things instead of talking, educating, and cause people to understand exactly what is happening. The linchpin for sustainable development and growth and industry is highlighted in section 22 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, which confers the right of everyone to choose their trade, occupation, or professional. On, on professional. One of the scholars once said, the chain of the organization is just as strong as its weakest link. And the blundering individual who by his conduct can win discredit to an entire organization and becomes the public measuring stick for the entire department. To prevent this positive building, positive attitude building on the image of the traffic officers must be done true quality training and never end at all. Let's continue. That's why we support the MECs. As far as the question of the roads are concerned, I think, Honorable Deputy Speaker, as the African National Congress, 
We support the intergovernmental relations that exist between the Department of, of Transport and Roads with the Sandra. But we wanted to put it clear that Sandra and everybody else should understand the history of the roads in this country and also the history of the roads in the Eastern Cape. Critical question people should just ask themselves. Why do we have so many passes or pass in the Western Cape? Few in the Eastern Cape. Take the history of the roads in this country, then you'll understand the situation the Eastern Cape it is in. It is because of that they focused on the roads as far as the Western Cape is concerned, so that for economic purposes, and also the focus was on the roads in Free State because the land, the topography of Free State is flat as compared to the one of the Eastern Cape. The Eastern Cape roads, they only build roads for military so that for, for the border wars. And those particular roads were gravel roads in the Eastern Cape. Western Cape, all the roads, most of them, because of the economic viability of that area, they started to say, let's build roads as from 1806. That's from 1806. That's why the Department of Traffic was only started in 1925. Only started so that each and every province, then there were four provinces, can start to check for its own revenue. members, especially in the area of Alfred and Zoo. Most of our people in the Alfred and Zoo, their cars are registered in KZM. They must change that. But they have to start to their cars in the Eastern Cape, Kabe Pangeli, Eastern Cape, so that we can get revenue from those particular cars. Because each and every province, Susela from 1925, must look for its own revenue through the regist car registration and so on. So it's an appeal that we wanted to make, Honorable Deputy Speaker, that is we need as politicians and also to assist the departments to make sure that at least there is cover up as far as the question of registration of the cars by the people of this particular province, those who stay in Alfred and so to register them here. And, and also, I want also to indicate that the question of the roads, I think we appreciate the work that the Department of Transport has done and also appreciate the work that will be done to a number of other roads that is in this province. We know how difficult and how expensive it is that is to build a road in the Eastern Cape. The last time one check was that a kilometer to have a third kilometer in the Eastern Cape was about 13 million rand. But when you go to other provinces, it is even far lesser than even a 10 million rand because of the topography that is of our own province. And people, whenever they come to the podium, whether opposition or what, should start to understand those particular factors that Eastern Cape has got these particular problems that we have. You see, to close, Honorable Deputy Speaker, there are times when I think as the African National Congress, we have to focus to ourselves most of the time. I couldn't need this basic concentrator, Kakulu, to or, or, or UTM, Abange Koyo Aba. And uh, because I thought Honorable Zindi will be here. Instead of o Zindi, no, no Banbani, that is or EFF, instead of them a focus to how do they increase their numbers here? because when we came yeah when we came to this legislature it, 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 um, they were having five people and then in the last term they were having about four two then then it means come go 2024 zero you see they'll have zero and the other ones about the Tayon, Don Tony, FF, Rating, Don Don. They don't, they have not won even a local government. They have not won even a local government. So you need not to worry too much about those particular people. Let's tell the people of this country what is it that we have done for them as African National Congress, nothing else. All these other things, the Ngole, Zogonzopango, Bota, and all of them here. Those people, they are not going to assist us at all. No, not you, not you. Thank you Shut very up. much. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Jumaza. You were left with one minute anyway.
I will request that uh, we invite the Honorable MEC, Acting MEC, uh, to conclude the debate. Honorable Fanta. Nkosi Segele Somlomo, Premier Obambeleyo, Members of the Executive Council, Honored Members of the House, Members of Transport Portfolio Committee, led by Honored Malamalela, DG, HOD is present here. Kumlandi namhlanje DG Awedwang, umshana waku kuni, kabanyo HOD. How I wish kunganja loko. Government officials, as corner up as a legislature, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. In courses as well, we too, abe fun this day too. Nabantu be too bonga babu keleyo, kuma kaso na bilolan. Mandi chikuni potani ndi police ngalinzasa. Segela Somlom, on behalf of MEC Koyle Nwata, allow me to extend a word of appreciation and gratitude to members of the Portfolio Committee for guidance that have, they have given to us and continue to, to provide to all of us in the Department of Transport. In our quest to improve our service delivery outcomes and audit outcomes, you have continued to exercise your oversight role to all of us as we are assigned with political and administrative roles to improve our, our output for our affordable and reliable transport in this province. We shall not disappoint you members of this August House, but continue management plan that has been developed. We'll closely monitor by political office, office until the positive outcomes are registered. Our department is faced with various challenges that range from lack of adequate budget to deal with both human and material resources to optimal operate at all level that all infrastructure and immediate filling of needed positions. This point was properly conversed during the budget speech when UMEC was tabling up that each department zone as provider social services must not be the extra budget. The working environment of traffic officers that are responsible to manage the public roads would be improved and dilapidated of office spaces in remote areas must be renovated. The pavements or oh, the overtime and all the incentives that the public servants and that are entitled to must be paid on time to all deserving officials. They must all be paid what is due to them. This will give every, time, every right to managers to, proper, to properly execute proper decision and discipline where it is necessary. I like that we to honor the mother when she's stressing the issue of management. Our workers must not be afraid of the managers. Workers must have servants and work back it is out of order. Above Okuba Abba Sebenzi, who is the Benz and Sebenz Wabuka Wushe. Segela Somlomo, 
payment of service providers on scholar transport and elsewhere will be processed within the legislative time lines. Building of bridges and the road maintenance will be properly implemented once adequate budget and operational plans are in place. Kuya bonaga like a bagge in Vuluni, Lukonia no move. Go back to Kalang at thirty years, Lohot went as a lowly. Sine history at ninety. Yes, Sentinel. Yes, the Pedega will be greatest. In Lela in ye. This year, Bulunadi ye pa put it. The greater Zongi Lalizit as Nantle last numbered. Sia Manga la Tango in his Zamo Emil Seminges is a Maya. God was still Kusoka band above a spell and a cup. A cup of band be too far above far like flies. The Petrega Cup room better than Major Jumbin. To date, Sasakel Lang a cup. A cup away gangsterism is on the rise. Abandoned by Petty Gabubi, who are wandering Bukuba. Abandoned by the Eastern Cape, about mailing our band, but telling a cab or no about him. Go back to pick up Eastern Cape, but Dinga will up Eastern Cape. Go to Abam Melibabo, Siababo goes about Salba Wood, with Baba Bonnega Wood, Siaban to Kuba, Abam Melanga Bona, but Melee Cab. He cab like a Weekend in a weekend. Man, no, I'm about to go. I'm about to wake up. As he has the the order that is so important and he needs to wake up. Go by every day, every weekend. Go to no, I'm about to go. I'm about to wake up. We are figuring him in no, boy. Him go to the combi as if he wake up. They will wake up soon. As I conclude, honourable members. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our traffic officers and labor for attending meetings convened by the Portfolio Committee on Transport and utilize platforms effectively to express themselves on issues related to traffic matters, particularly in the province. As a department, we accept a report 40 Sia Chokuti is the club as long as Kona Kuyo. We are going to take them forward. Lastly, or the speaker, Obambeleyo, Onyasegela, we welcome this report and we are of, of the firm view that its findings and recommendations will assist the department to address challenges confronting the traffic stations and workers in the province. I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MSC. Uh, Honorable members, just be reminded that uh, this report will not be tabled for any agreement or any objection because of the situation we are experiencing inside the chamber. I will ask the secretary to read the next order of the day. Consideration of the report of the Portfolio Committee on Education on school visits undertaken during January 2023. Chairperson of uh, the Portfolio Committee on Education, can you come and. Oh, it's not. What is happening? Honorable. Deputy Chair of Chairs, Honorable Acting Speaker, the Chief Whip, the Deputy Chief Whip, members of the legislature, the Acting uh, Premier today, and other members of the Executive Council. 
Let me preface our report by the following. The Eastern Cape, as of the 27th of uh, July 2022, has 341 schools. Out of, out of that 341 schools, 5,109 schools are public schools, and 232 are public schools. When you compare this with the, the beloved Western Cape, by our friends on the left, as of July 27, 2022, 1,366 schools. The same matter that I think is crucial for us to raise is that uh, this report is the report of the committee of the whole house. So I expect all members to be on this side to defend their report. Thirdly, we are noting that uh, when we embark upon this program, for the January 2023 school visits, if I'm correct, an amount of 2.8 million rands was spent by the legislature. Of importance, Chair, is that uh, some of the members did not complete the two weeks because of maybe some emergencies but some have deliberately decided to focus on other things, whilst the legislature has spent a lot of money in this regard. Fourthly, which is a note that uh, the MEC has to take care of, that contrary to our request that we usually make, that when these teams are accompanied by officials from the department, we had requested that uh, those officials must be able to intervene on the spot. And therefore, those officials must be officials with authority to, uh, to intervene on the ground. Because it does not mean that these members are afraid. They need to be accompanied. We know where we're going, but one people that are going to impact positively to unlock some of the bottlenecks that these members discover when they arrive in schools. The report, the full report that encompasses all findings per district and per school was submitted in compliance with the rules of the legislature. Once again, Chair, it seems as if I'll be playing an old or scratch CD in terms of the general findings. That's why when we presented the July 2022 follow-up school visits, we indicated that perhaps it's high time that uh, the legislature revokes Rule 204, wherein the MEC responsible has to come here and account as to why those resolutions were not implemented. We may understand, Chair, that uh, for the general school visits, indeed, if there are new things that were not part of the plans for the Department of Education in that financial year, those matters may not be implemented soon. But however, they are supposed to be forming part of the ensuing financial year's plans. The other thing that is critical for us to take note of is the fact that in the reports that we have presented, we have observed, we have observed something that uh, seems to be 
affecting the Amatole West District in schools that are having hostels with huge projects. Many of those schools, principals of those schools have been displaced. And new ones have been appointed. And when you look at the reasons behind, we find that uh, there's a suspicion of an underhandedness by some officials wanting to have control of those projects that are in those, in those schools. It's a matter that is now a rata as the committee. Thirdly, in schools we have observed that there's a lot of unnecessary fighting and the phenomenon Yabandwanabumkuba where if law principally happens to be coming from another part of the province does good work but when it is by the way and I think uh, we have observed that Kakulu Pa Alfonso West, in particular, the area of the uh, X-Men. And also, we've observed as a committee that many times on Mondays and Fridays, you hardly find the full complement of staff members in schools. The reason being that those people on Fridays, they have to leave home. They have to leave to their respective homes earlier than expected. On Mondays, they are late or they are not there. These are the observations that we have made. And lastly, in terms of the school infrastructure, we have observed that on the other side of the Kai River, we still have a number of schools that are built by communities. <laughs> On the Ponosholo Wing neighbor, we still have his call as a quag asbestos, as a quenang amazing. Also, we've observed Uguti, many of what is called CMCs. Second management centers in the newly established centers do not have 